This only gives you, Malaz, what is happening. 40 members from the MLAs in Assam. No, no dispute on any of this. The next. And then is the disqualification petition filed on page the 25th. Page 62. Malaz, that's at page 72. Mr. Sibyl, page 62 PDF that we've, you've just, we've just touched upon, notice to move a resolution. What does para 2 say? At page 62. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Yes, I just. Para 2 says, Malaz, we all respectfully submit that you no longer have the right to continue as Deputy Speaker as you no longer enjoy the support of the majority, majority of the House, of the House. more particularly the following Is members of our party. Majority of the House? Yes. Is that what you are trying to You. This is your emphasis. Yes. That here, yes. also the references to the majority of the, the House, House and goes on to say particularly the following members of the party. That's correct. Because Malaz, what is party means? The Legislature Party. No, that's not quite correct. But my learned friend repeatedly says this. But every member of the Legislative Assembly and of Parliament is ex officio yes, yes. member of the oh, Pratinidhi Sabha. That's correct. We are also part of that. That's right. No but doubt. Else, one one second. Second. Hold, on. hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. There is an overlap. No dispute. The 39 members of the Legislative Party are also members of the party. No yeah, dispute. No question about it. No, no how, how am I? I have not said anything. They have to have primary membership. Yes, yes, yes. I have not said anything double against double that. Double Only thing is that 39 members can't hijack the party. That's all. That we'll see. That, that's the issue. <laughs> of course, we, we welcome you. Uh, it's all right. No, no, no. Let's, let me continue, please. Next. So, Malas, uh, your ladyship was right. Exactly, Malas. Then kindly come to 59. 59. PDF 72. The, uh, no, first, yes, 71. PDF 71, page 58. Ma trouble for Udav, Himan, Himanta meets Eknath, 40 MLAs in Assam. Where, where, sorry, there. where are you? Uh, the Hindustan Times article. News. Hindustan yes, Times yes. article. That's to show that it's reported. It just shows, Malaz, that you know the surroundings are comfortable. Relevant for content schedule, no doubt. <laughs> Not for a, for a speaker, relevant. <laughs> then, Malaz, the notices. Inference. Uh, now, no, no, it's the notices we don't have. No, no more Malaz documents. No. All kinds of statements have been made, Malaz, that we are following a separate party. But this, that is, that's all happens in Assam. It's a given, Malaz, so let's not go into that. So this is all, Malaz, as far as the documentation is concerned. Now, let's see, Malaz, what the issues are. The first, Malaz, deals with Nabam Rebia, basically. So that your lawyers will have to decide. That is, does the constitution permit an institutional hiatus by tying the hands of the speaker in functioning under the 10th schedule through proceedings initiated by a member of the Legislative Assembly under 179C? That I've argued that your lordships will decide. All I can say in that regard is that if you allow that law to stay, it will be misused, it will be a new model of toppling government. Safety valve, valve for de defectors. Now, the second, what are the consequences in law when members, whether in minority or majority, of the legislature party in the House act de halts the political party and are contrary to the directions of the political party and assert their separate identity by forming a separate group within the legislature party in the legislature? Squarely, Malas, that's an issue. Squarely that can, in any legislature, X number of people form a separate identity and say, we'll not listen to the party, we'll decide what to that do. That you've been arguing that. Yes, will a group, next third, will a group within the legislature party asserting their separate identity and acting towards the political party or contrary to its directions have per se incurred disqualification under para of the 10th schedule? There's no evidence to be led here. Admittedly, there is a whip, Sunil Prabhu, on the third, saying vote against the trust vote. Admittedly, on the record of the House, they voted in favor of the trust vote. Even by that time, Gogavale had not been appointed by the Speaker, though the Speaker has no right to appoint Gogavale. He, he appointed Gogavale on the third evening, which he can't do otherwise, but that's another matter. So, Malas, what is there for the Speaker to decide? There's a violation. The vote is on the record. You're not usurping anything. You're only declaring. This question is incoherent. This issue is incoherent 
<clears throat> what is the logical follow up then no, the speaker will say it's per se case i'm sorry speaker will say it's a per se case yeah i hope so you so you are you are i hope so mother i hope so it's a matter what what you are trying to say in three is in per se cases yes should the court not decide yes, that's what that's, that's the point that's that's, that's the, so that's why not, that's why i would put per se there mother only for that reason god this is inquiry we <laughs> we have to ultimately persuade you mother so we have to like that yeah i always say without the court on your side there's no point arguing and the only way to have the court on your side is to be as reasonable as possible though politics is essentially unreasonable the art of politics is to do the, make the unreasonable look reasonable necessarily <laughs> politics can be very reasonable also <laughs> three will, will a group within the legislature party asserting their separate identity and acting behind the political party or contrary to its directions have per se incurred disqualification under paragraph 2 then four can a group within the legislature party asserting their separate identity and acting behind the political party or contrary to its directions have the constitutional authority to alter the leadership of the political party in the house or the whip appointed by the political party in the house directly in issue because of those documents for us i've shown to your lordships already that you are removed from assam you are removed as the chief whip and i continue to be the party and you are removed as lead i continue to be the group leader five given that an elected government should be allowed to serve its full term this is now a constitutional premise mother on the basis of which i made this proposition given that an elected government should be allowed to serve its full term as a matter of constitutional law can a group within the legislative party asserting a separate identity dislodge an elected government while proceedings for disqualification under the 10th schedule are pending that is before the speaker decides on the issue of disqualification directly in issue but well, what you are doing in this process is side tracking the disqualification proceedings toppling a government and then saying now my speaker will decide actually the constitutional premise and every constitutional authority should in fact help in ensuring that an elected government continues to be in power what is i uh, something that i am going to argue later but i want to just tell your lordship something very interesting what is a governor has to decide to administer the oath of office so 30 people go to him 20 people go to him the governor must first know which party they belong to either it's a post poll alliance or a pre poll alliance right so the governor must first ask them which is that party normalus their position 39 members position is in kuwait they can't represent the shiv sena this is the first time this issue has arisen in, in this country so normalus how does the governor decide that i'll administer oath of office there is no party before it i'm just touching it normalus this is an issue that your lordships will have to consider so mother let's, let's come to six should the governor who is constitutionally obliged to sustain the continuity of an elected government change the status quo by allowing for a change in government before disqualification proceedings are decided by the speaker then next whether the governor can swear in as, as chief minister a person against whom a notice for disqualification has been issued by the speaker acting as a tribunal under the 10th schedule and is pending adjudication what is the impact of pending disqualification petitions on the ability of members to participate in a test of strength on the floor of the house when their vote would have the effect of toppling the government i can understand in a situation miller that it really doesn't matter the outcome would be the same but here the hard facts are their vote topples the government so you have a allegedly according to me a member who is should be disqualified voting to topple an elected government without the governor asking him which party you belong to without the governor mother even finding out for himself 
or the governor saying, look, there are some disqualification petitions. By this, an elected government will be toppled. Let's stay our hands. We will not administer oath of office till the disqualification is decided. He can say that. Should he say that? Should he not say that? That's well, some, an area where well, your lordships have never looked at, so to say. Well, obviously, it's premised on constitutional morality. Then, well, can a constitutional court in a matter relating to disqualification of the tenth schedule decide the matter on its own without referring the matter to the speaker for decision? And if so, under what circumstances? This is right, directly what my lord put to me, and we are aware of it. If the decision of the speaker that a member has incurred disqualification under the 10th schedule relates back to the date of the action complained of, then what is the status of proceeding that took place during the pendency of a disqualification petition? Because it relates back, Malat, he's the chief minister. What do we do? Which is why the <laughs> time is of the essence. What is the impact of removal of Para 3 of the 10th schedule? I've already argued that. In what circumstances do the speaker recognize the whip and the leader of the political party? I'm arguing that. What is the scope of powers of the commission with respect to determination of a split? That's something I'll argue later. This is, for us, according to me, the issues that my, your lordships might wish to look into. Now, let's kindly have a look at uh, my overview document which is Malad's document for the, our, our submissions, petitioner's submissions. A. A, Malad's, correct? And kindly have a look at outline and over PDF page five. Five. Overview. Malad's, your lordships may skip that. I want your lordship straight away to take you to the issue of the whip.